Hi, hello. Welcome to this video lecture series on mechanics of materials. So in this, I'll be discussing about bending moment and shear force in beams. So to start with, I'll be discussing about introduction types of beams, loads, reactions, what are the shear forces, what are bending moments, what is that rate of loading, sign conventions, relation between shear force, bending moment and intensity of load. And also I'll explain how to draw the bending moment and shear force diagrams for given beams subjected to different types of loads. Now, what is that shear force and what is that bending moment in beams? So before that, we have to know what is a beam. Beam is nothing but a structural member subjected to transverse load. So where do we find the application of these beams? So in case of supporting floors and ceiling of buildings, pipes carrying water, shafts supported on bearings, lathe beds, and many things that we can see in front of us. Then what are the types of beams? So beams are classified mainly as below that is straight beam and curved beam so in case of straight beam that axis is will be along the straight line axis of that beam will be along straight line example for that there are so many examples some of them are building frames electric poles brake levers handlebars etc then what is a curved beam so in case of curved beam, the axis will be along a curve. Example for that will be crane hook, arches, chain links, C clamps, punch presses, and so on. Then what are that horizontal, vertical, and inclined beams? Horizontal beam is one in which the axis of the beam is straight and horizontal. Example is building frames and beams of bridges. Then vertical frames or vertical beams will have their axis straight and vertical. Example, electric pole. So then what are that inclined planes? Inclined planes will have their axis straight but inclined with vertical or horizontal at an angle. Example, we can give that ladder resting against a wall. Then we have statically determinate and statically indeterminate beams. So as the name itself indicates, statically determinate beams are those in which the unknowns can be found out with the available static equilibrium equations alone. That means, let's say for example, if we consider a simply supported beam with two point loads as shown in figure, there are two unknowns that is support reactions Ra and Rb. And to find out those support reactions Ra and Rb, we have two equilibrium that is static equilibrium conditions or equilibrium equations. So those are nothing but sum of all the vertical forces are equal to zero and sum of all the moments about any point is equal to zero. So making use of these two equilibrium conditions, that is static equilibrium conditions, we can find out the unknowns, that is support reactions or A and R B. Since the number of unknowns are equal to some number of uh, static equilibrium equations, we can call that as statically determinate beam. Then, what is that statically indeterminate beam? So here, for example, if we consider a fixed beam, there are more number of unknowns than the static equilibrium equations. What are that? So we have to find out support reactions Ra, support reaction Rb, in addition to that, end moments Ma and Mb. So totally we have four unknowns, whereas we have only two static equilibrium conditions that is sum of all the vertical forces are equal to zero and the moment sum of all the moments about a point is equal to zero since the number of unknowns are 
more than that number of known equilibrium static equilibrium equations this type of beams are known as statically indeterminate beams so we also make use of that compatibility conditions in addition to that so then the beams are also classified as cantilever simply supported fixed overhanging and continuous beams as shown in figures below so a cantilever is one in which one end of the beam will be fixed in case of simply supported beam as shown in figure it will be supported at two ends by some pin joints or hinges or two simple supports if both ends of the beam are fixed okay or built in then we call it as fixed beam and all those are shown in figures now what is that overhanging beam if you have a portion of the beam beyond the supports then we call it as overhanging beam then what is that continuous beam if there are more than two supports if there are more than two supports for the beam then we call it as continuous beam then what are that types of loads so types of loads also very important for drawing shear force and bending moment diagrams in beams so we have different types of loads under that we can take that point or concentrated load then what is that point or concentrated load if the contact length between the load and beam is negligible that is if the contact distance is less very less or negligible compared to the length of the beam it is said to be under point load then what is that uniformly distributed load so as the name itself indicates that load will be distributed throughout its length throughout it throughout that length of the beam uniformly so that is shown in figure then we have uniformly varying load so what is that uniformly varying load so the load varies from one point to another in a linear fashion that is in the form of a triangle so that's why we call this as uniformly varying load or triangular load in addition to that we also have one more type of load that is coupled then what is that shear force and shear force diagram so shear force is nothing but the algebraic sum of all the vertical forces acting to the left or right of the section considered that means if we consider a beam so all that loads or forces acting to the left or right of that section considered or nothing but shear force then what is that shear force diagram that is nothing but graphical representation of that forces at different section or different points of a beam so here the ordinate of the shear ordinate of the shear force at any section gives the value of shear force at that section then what is that bending moment and what are that bending moment diagrams so again bending moment is nothing but algebraic sum of all the clockwise and counter clockwise moment acting about the section considered it is nothing but sum of all the algebraic or that is algebraic sum of all the clockwise and counter clockwise moment acting about a section considered or nothing but bending moment then what is that bending moment diagram it is similar to shear force diagram this is nothing but the graphical representation of bending moment at different points of a beam so the ordinate of the bending moment diagram at any section gives the value of bending moment at that section considered then while drawing shear force and bending moment diagrams we have to consider some sign conventions so sign convention what i am following here is say if we consider if the shear force is an unbalanced vertical force it tends to shear one portion of the beam with respect to another okay so if the right portion slides down that is i'll consider that as right downward right downward shear force is taken as positive so to the section considered if 
right downward is positive then left downward is negative so the other two conditions left upward is positive and right upward is negative so that is what we follow for drawing shear force diagrams i repeat left upward if you remember that left upward positive then right upward is negative left downward is negative then right downward is positive with reference to the section considered then what are that sign conventions for bending moment so here we have, i have sorry so sign convention here if we consider a curved portion as shown in figure if the beam is bent if the beam is bent in such a way that concavity is at the top it is considered as positive bending moment that means to say for the section considered the clockwise and counter clockwise moments about the section is positive when that concavity is at the top and this we call it as sagging bending moment so now on similar lines if the beam bends in such a way that either the convexity at the bottom or the concavity at the top as shown in figure the clockwise and counter clockwise moment about the section considered are negative then this is known as hogging bending moment now we have to know the important relation between bending moment shear force and intensity of load so to explain that consider a uniformly distributed load with simple supports at a and b as shown in figure so that load throughout its length is taken as w per meter length now in that if we consider a portion of the beam portion of the beam pq okay of length delta x as shown in figure then that elemental length will be under equilibrium under the action of various forces so let us say that the resultant effect of that support reaction at a or a and that udl acting to the left of that point p so the resultant effect of that let us take that as downward force f at point p and again due to that distance from a to p that point p where we have considered from a to that point p where we have considered there will also be the resultant effect of that because of that distance moment will be there so at the point p we will have a downward force f and a clockwise moment m as shown in figure similarly because of that additional length delta x so at point q so to keep that element in equilibrium an upward force of f plus delta f is considered so that delta f will take care of that load over that length delta x in addition to that you will also have a moment more than the moment at point p because of that additional length and let that moment be m plus delta m at q as shown in figure now that element is in equilibrium under the action of these following forces what are that force f that is shear force at p f plus delta f shear force at q m bending moment at p m plus delta m bending moment at q now what are the conditions of equilibrium static equilibrium conditions so some of all the forces vertical forces in that element must be equated to zero so sigma that is v is vertical forces is equal to zero so what are the vertical forces that are there 
in that element as i told you f and p so if i take f positive then f plus delta f i have to take negative because it will be in the opposite direction therefore f plus so since that downward force f i am taking positive even that uniformly distributed load w newton per meter so for delta x meters it is w into delta x so since that is also acting downwards i take positive for that f plus w delta x and since f plus delta f is acting opposite to the direction of f that is upwards therefore minus f plus delta f is equal to zero so now if we simplify this we get delta f by delta x is equal to w so what does that indicate that the rate of change of shear force or slope of the shear force diagram is equal to the intensity of load w is nothing but intensity of load similarly by equating moments about a point so i have considered point q for equating the moments to zero sum of all the moments about the point q is equal to zero so what are all the moments first one at point p we have clockwise i am taking clockwise moment as positive m and since that w is acting downwards that also causes moment but that is counter clockwise moment about the point q therefore minus w into delta x is nothing but the total load of that udl in that elemental length delta x but that will be concentrated at the center as point load therefore moment is nothing but force into perpendicular distance that force is nothing but w into delta x because of udl that will be acting at the center as point load and about point q that from the center it is delta x by 2 you have to multiply minus and again that force force is nothing but f is there f into delta x the force that is acting at p so since it is acting similar to that of w okay that, that is downwards that is also considered as negative minus f into delta x minus moment at q is in counter clockwise direction therefore it is m plus delta m is equal to 0 so all that moments that are acting about that point q must be considered so that f plus delta f since it is acting at the point q itself the perpendicular distance is 0 therefore that should not be considered now if we simplify and neglect the product of small quantities that is product of small quantities are nothing but delta x into delta x by 2 if we neglect and simplify we get delta m by delta x is equal to minus f so what does that indicate the rate of change of bending moment or slope of the bending moment curve is equal to the shear force at that section thank you